mic check, please. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Ducks on the Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Jennings. I'm your host, Dr. Mike Brazier. My name is John Gordon. I'll be your host. And I'm your host, Katie Burke. Welcome to the Ducks Unlimited Podcast, the only podcast about all things waterfowl. From hunting insights to science-based discussions about ducks, geese, and issues affecting waterfowl and wetlands conservation in North America, we bring the resource to you, the DU Podcast. everybody, welcome back to the Ducks Unlimited podcast. I'm your host, Mike Brazier, and joining me in studio today is my co-host, Chris Jennings. Great to have you. What's going on, Mike? Good to be back in studio with you. Um, you know, sometimes we're coming and going, so we don't get to do this as often as we used to when we first started doing this. Yeah, and it's that time of year where the coming and going seems to be more frequent. Yeah. Our calendars don't line up very much. And the other thing that's kind of neat about this is I get to be the one hosting and asking you questions. We don't get to do that very often either. Uh, and so today's episode is going to be really cool. It's going to be sort of a companion piece to something that we featured in the Ducks Unlimited magazine. Uh, when was that? What was July, it? August. July, August. Of this year. The cover photo, a fabulous photo. Man, there's a whole bunch we can talk about on this particular uh, topic here. The Ducks Unlimited Ultimate Duck Boat. That's going to be the topic today. Uh, go back, check out that uh, that issue of the magazine. I mean, that, that photo on the front cover is just fabulous to begin with. But... We want to take some time to step through, hear the story about how this came about. Um, I have a lot of questions about kind of how you selected some of the products and what all went into that. How many choices? Because there's an innumerable number of choices, right, out there. So just for starters... Any, any other thing to preface with regard to this particular little promotional feature or initiative that y'all y'all came up with? How, how did it all start? Yeah, um, you know, this was a project that, you know, started at a, we do a magazine planning meeting every year um, to plan for the following year. So the magazine itself is planned out, you know, a year in advance. And I'm kind of responsible for all of the product coverage. And the July-August issue is the gear issue. Every year we do new guns and gear. There's always awesome like gear. Yeah. And so, you know, I came up with this idea and that, you know, we take and we build the ultimate duck boat. And and you can take that in any way, shape, or form. I mean, we, by all means, I've been criticized with this feature. <laughs> no, I— many times for some of the things that we chose, but also, you know, this feature jumped out so much to people that I've received more feedback on the ultimate duck boat piece than anything that I've ever done. No with the magazine. Yeah. I mean, majority of it positive too, yeah. you know, and that's, and that's what made me say, Hey, I think we can record a podcast just kind of about this project and show off some of these cool features in the boat. But yeah, so it, it kind of came to light in a magazine planning meeting. Where I was like, Hey, I think this is a good idea. And then my editor, goes through all the ideas and, you know, we discuss it. And then he's like, all right, that is a good idea. Go ahead and do it. So we started this project in probably May or June of 2021. No kidding. Yes. So so typically these type of magazine ideas, you're looking like a year in advance or something like this, but this was two years in advance, right? Well, it would have been really like almost like a year and a half. Okay. So the first things first is we're like, all right, we have to get a boat, Mm. you know, and, and if you just type Google in duck boats, I mean, there is every type of variation of duck boat out there. So the first email that I sent this entire project was to Tucker Ward, War Eagle Boats. And I was like, Tucker, here's what we're trying to do. Can we get a boat? Because what we're doing, like, we don't, we don't have the assets to basically go out and buy any of these products. Yeah. So we have to rely on our partners, advertisers, you know, people who are looking for additional coverage and editorial. Um, you know, we have to rely on people to give us this and do it, which as we get further into this, it's amazing what some of these people did. How quick did they jump on the offer? Immediately, War Eagle was just all over it. You know, yeah. it's like, all right. And so, so he, like, hey, you know, and during that time, everyone still to this day, everyone is under the constraints of, you know, being able to get product, make product, you know. And War Eagle is no different than anyone else. You know, they're tight on what they, you know, can pump out right now, or even, especially at that time. And so he sent me an email, was like, give me some time. I'll get one in the process, build one, and you guys can come get it. And it's like, okay. So, you know, like a month and a half goes by and, you know, I moved on to something else. We're not even thinking about it. And he sends an email. He's like, hey, your boat's coming off the production line like September 5th. 
if you want to come get it. And I was like, okay. So we planned and we went and we shot, we even shot some videos of their whole plan, which was cool. Uh, very awesome experience to see how they build these boats. Uh, but we went and picked up the duck boat probably sometime middle of September in 2021. We brought it here immediately back to NHQ. We, you know, we went down to uh, their plant in Arkansas, picked it up, drove it across the state of Arkansas, brought it back to NHQ. And what we picked up, we picked up a 648 LDV Sportsman. And this is a model that what we were looking for was like a 16 to 18 foot hole somewhere in that range. You know, we weren't, you know, like I said, we're asking someone to give it to us. So we can't be picky, uh, you know, so. Uh, but, and they, th- but they would want it to be the right kind of uh, watercraft, the b- boat also, right? Absolutely. You know, this is one of their most popular models. It's a, you know, it is a duck boat. You know, it's yeah. 16 feet, three inches, uh, 48 inch wide with a 67 inch beam. I mean, this thing and it's, you know, they painted it up in mossy oak, uh, added some additional features to it, gun box, um, rear hatch lid. They did the, uh, there, there was a couple different things that they put on there that I thought were cool. You know, they make custom even drink holders, uh, which I was like, that's cool. You know, and that was one of the first things we brought up someone, someone like on Instagram when we first showed the boat was like, it needs drink holders. And I'm like, got them, got (laughs) them, got them before. Uh, you know, and so, you know, it came with like the duck bill front. Uh, kind yeah, of tell kind me of about extended. that because I've never, I'm not familiar with that. Yeah, it's, it's that duck bill front is just kind of extended over the front of the boat. It almost extends the mm. deck a little bit. You can see, if you're looking at the images, you can see, you know, there's two almost like handles on the front of that. I see that. And so right on the bow. So if you're standing in the water, which duck owners are typically oh, yeah. doing, you can I pull see. this boat around uh, pretty easily. Um and it also came with two what they call their lockjaw brackets. So uh, those brackets are kind of a V-shaped metal bracket that have holes in them, so that when you pull up to you know the edge of a river or even in the timber or anywhere, those V-shaped brackets go up against a tree, and then you can just wrap a bungee around, mm. goes in the holes, and so you can hold your boat. It's basically stabilize it in the timber or anywhere you're going to pull up. So. Those were some of the original accessories that that War Eagle kind of kicked in. And um, and then we just went from there. So we had this blank canvas. And so I started, and one of the first, I will throw, give a shout out real quick to uh, one of the first people I called was a guy named Joseph Edwards. And, and most people don't ever recognize his name. Um, but on Instagram, his the hipster woodsman. And he's mm. pretty popular on Instagram. And I've made pretty good friends with him, and I know he is constantly towing a boat somewhere. He's a duck boat guy. So I just called him, and I was like, hey, man, like this is the project that we're doing. What kind of things would you want to put in a boat? And his first reaction, you know, he wanted to put on this massive motor. Um, he's really into, like, the two-stroke, 90-horsepower Yamahas that are on these some of these duck boats. I'm like, man, you know, I got to keep it in – with." The, within 25 horsepower because there are so many public areas that have a restriction. And so like, I know we've got a lot of comments about, Oh, mud motors and Oh, this and Oh, that we were playing this under the dynamic that this boat could be used anywhere in the country. And so we, that's how we kind of approached when we, when we moved on to the motor. Another thing that we'll get into that uh, Joseph brought up was lighting. He's like, I got a lighting guy. And I was like, okay. And that's we'll get into that later because that's really cool. Um, but we'll move on to the motor. And, and so the motor is... As you, you got a lot of comments on it. Oh, yeah. A lot of criticism You're on the smiling. selection, yeah. <laughs> the se- selection yeah. of that motor. But you and I were talking about this. And it's like there's any number of any number of motors that you, or any number of applications – uh, that you're trying to mm-hmm. trying to match, you're trying to fit whenever you're a waterfowl hunter, whether it be the coastal shallow coastal marshes, mud flats of Louisiana or any other coastal environment, or whether it be a river or a lake or some mm-hmm. other deeper body of water. I mean, there's a lot of places where waterfowl waterfowlers hunt. So no single motor is going to be optimal for all of for those everyone. different applications, That's right? right? That's right. And so, and one of the things I noted here is that it appeared as though you you selected a motor that would deliver some versatility. That's right. Right. Mm-hmm. So so tell us about that. Yeah, and and that's one thing, and that, and that's what we we've la- I've laughed. Um, you got to be thick skinned in this business, you know. And, <laughs> that's and, right. Because uh, most of the people were saying you needed you had to have a mud motor, right? Oh yeah. Well, I mean, some said mud motors. You know, some said you know a, there the issue with the long shaft. You know, there was there was several comments that were made. I mean, most of them were like that guy's an idiot. He's never duck hunted in his life, and so. Um, 
Any criticisms on the uh, on the horsepower? No, I mean I think there's a preference for some people that would say, "Hey, you, you know, that boat's only rated to go up to 40." Yeah. So it's not like you're going much yeah. higher. Now guys go above that. Yeah. But probably not a good idea from a safety. No, I mean we have a partnership with Yamaha outboards they are doing putting some money into some uh, conservation work that we're doing down in south louisiana and so i reached out to those guys through one of our directors of development kind of got involved kind of interjected myself into their conversations like hey we're working on this project and they i mean they didn't blink i mean they're just like hey i got one for you and so i talked to another guy um actually jay england who comes on the show quite a bit yeah and i told him i said hey i got a yamaha f25 four stroke long shaft coming he's like no way He's like, you can't, those things don't even, ex- they were so hard to get your hands on because he was like, I'm trying to get one of those for something else. And he's like, there's no way you got one. I was like, and it showed up to War Eagle before I picked the boat up. No kidding. Yeah. So we picked the boat up. They mounted it on. I mean, that motor is so quiet. Um, you know, we didn't run it much, but we did, you know, we ran it a little bit, especially for the photo shot, which we'll get to. And four stroke, obviously, you know, better emissions rating. This thing's quieter. It's got the power. I mean, everyone's like, oh, it's underpowered. Like, no, it's not. <laughs> you know what I mean? Again, I'm not a guy who's out there racing somebody. You know, if maybe if you're racing someone, you may want to do that. But I, I've have yet to race anyone in my life. In yeah, good boat. for you. <laughs> yeah, like, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe the, it is a thing, I know. But, uh, you know, it, it is the perfect motor for this. It's super lightweight. It's only 143 pounds. You can pick this thing up and take it off the back of the boat if you want to. I feel like this is the start of a David Allen Co. lyric where you just called it the perfect, perfect motor. The only thing that I that I would like to see on it that we don't have right now is a, a camo pattern. Yeah. Does Yamaha do any of those? Uh, n- not that I am aware of, but you know that was one thing, and we wanted to get a cover for it too, just because I when I used to hunt, I didn't have a camo motor um, out of my boat, my personal boat, and I just had one of those little you know, covers that just goes right yeah. over the top. And and so that's something that that we have in there. It wasn't featured in the in this feature. Oh, but, but it's it, part of the it's part of it. It's deal. in there. It's just we there's only so much space to cover with that. Um but yeah, I mean as far that was really the only thing that was that anyone even mentioned as far as what, you know, why it would not be the ultimate duck boat. But you know, from my perspective, I've hunted all over the country in lakes, rivers, you know, the ocean in every type of duck boat, every type of motor, um, and like this 25 horse, 16 foot boat is about as versatile as it gets. I mean, I crossed the Mississippi River a week and a half ago down in South Louisiana, you know, teal hunting in a 16 foot boat with a mud motor. You know, yeah. it's like I've seen the applications on different. Now, those dudes would love to be running the Mississippi River with an outboard. Yeah. But if as soon as they get on, the other side where they're hunting, they have to have the mud motor. So it's like, they're stuck. You know, most of those guys in South Louisiana that that are really big mud motor proponents, they need them. I mean, they have to have that. But then you know what else they have sitting in their driveway? A jumbo with with an outboard (laughs) outboard on it. They've got multiple boats. So in trying to narrow this down to one, this is what it became. And, and from there, this thing just absolutely blew up. Um, I reached out to, like I said, um, Joseph Edwards had mentioned that he had a guy for lighting and he's like, Hey, or just call Nelson at, um, Southern light led. And they're in Auburn, Alabama. So I reached out to Nelson and he was, again, did not even blink. He's like, I need to get the, this boat here. And, and I'm like, okay, trying to get it to Auburn. You know, we're, we've already gone from Monticello, Arkansas, Memphis. Now he's like, we got to get this boat to Auburn. So it, it, how it worked out is he ended up having a duck camp in Northeast Arkansas. So during duck season, so by this time it's the first week of December. Mm-hmm. and Of last year, 22 or 21. 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're still 21. Nelson comes through, shows up here at national headquarters, gets the boat. And actually, so it's been I, broken I take that in. Back. The, the he trailer's didn't even been, do that. No. I take that back. Well, how that worked was Nelson was like, hey, man, do you got a guy that does flooring? Hmm. And I'm like, no, we haven't gotten that far yet. He's like, there's a guy in Coldwater, Mississippi, uh, Caleb Smith. He'll circle S machine. He's like, I'm going to send him up there to pick up the boat, and then he'll bring it to me. So Caleb shows up, picks it up. I don't know these guys, really. From They just show up at National Headquarters. I put this boat on the back of their truck, and they drive away. It's and a I'm little like, bit of trust there. Yeah, I was like, man, I didn't even really vet this. You know, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, we knew him well enough. I mean, I'm just joking about not really knowing him. But so Caleb ended up, so Nelson didn't come through. I, I misspoke there. Uh, it was Caleb who 
picked the boat up and took it to his shop in Coldwater, Mississippi, which is only about an hour from here, if that, 45 minutes uh, south. And so he called us, I don't know, three weeks later. He was like, hey, man, I got it done. And I'd send him some logos, you know, do what you want to with it. Here, We've never used the Ducks Unlimited magazine masthead. Yeah, and it's it's cool. Yeah, and and what the masthead is, it's like if you pick up the Ducks Unlimited magazine, it says the Ducks Unlimited, that that logo the right The particular there. DU magazine font. That's yeah, right. Title font. Yep. It is and awesome. And so the, he put that in the flooring, in this marsh deck flooring, and, and Caleb is a marsh deck dealer. And, and so he did all of this. And also what he did was he rigged up all the lighting or all the electronic stuff. So another funny story about this. So a buddy of mine that works for a PR agency um, called me and he's like, hey, I saw you're doing this duckboat project. I'm doing some stuff for Ray Marine. Can we give you guys a Ray Marine system? And I was like, yeah, man, no big deal. That'd, that'd be awesome. So Caleb also rigged up this navigation technology that we put in. It's a Ray, Ray Marine Axiom Plus chart plotter. Um, it's got all the bells and whistles, anything you could possibly imagine, including Netflix. I mean, you can, yeah, I mean, we're getting a little carried away. Here. It is. And then also what he threw in, he threw in the Teledyne FLIR M232 thermal camera. Yeah. So if you look at the feature and that's another thing that one people did point out is like, you got this big white thing on the front of the boat. Like, what is this big white thing? And that is a thermal camera. And so on the chart plotter screen, the navigation screen, it's touch screen. And so for example, the way this, the way we kind of envisioned this was you're on the river five o'clock in the morning, you know, two hours before sunrise. It's super foggy. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, that's yeah. a dangerous situation. Yeah. And so with this thermal camera, you could navigate. Oh, that's river. a perfect, uh, perfect tool to add to a, to a boat that's running a foggy river. Or- Absolutely. And, and so like even a log in the river would throw off a different thermal signature. Yeah. So you could see that. You know, and so it's really something that, again, is it necessary on a 16-foot boat? I mean, Caleb at, at Circle S, when he installed it, he's like, man, there's like 200 extra feet of cable for this thing. Where do I put it? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> because this thing is made for a 68 Viking. You know, like yeah. this is made for a, an ocean-going vessel, yeah. basically. Uh, but we or put a, it on a duck boat. Or so. a research vessel. You know, I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking we're talking about it as a duck boat. It could also be a duck research there boat with that kind of technology on absolutely it, man. you're thinking like model ducks yeah. in the marsh at uh, night yeah could, just, you know. right so yeah you could pick up you know anything that puts off a different thermal signature so that was kind of a really cool addition and, and like i said we're bouncing around uh, but we'll go back to the flooring circle S machine put in the flooring they uh you know put the masthead right on the front deck all the really other logos cool. are in there as well. The, Got to be super comfortable for your dog and their their foot padding. Oh yeah, and and they so the War Eagle it was they they laser etched these into this um, this marsh deck flooring, and so you've got War Eagle on the gun box. You've got the duck head logo, the kind of the symbolic right in the middle of the main deck, and then on the back you can see that it's got multiple logos from Southern Light Ellie, mainly the people who contributed to the project. So you've got um, you know. Circle S, you've got Southern Light LED, you've got Drake, um, you know, and several other ones on there that, you know, really rounded out this whole boat. So now we've got flooring, we've got the electronics in there. The lighting. Let's, lighting. I mean, you, you've talked about the lighting a little bit, but we've got a super powerful powerful bow light. you got rooster tail lights, exterior lights, and uh, I don't know that we've seen it yet. I mean, I, people that receive the magazine will have seen this on the cover as well as the feature inside, but is there a a spot on the website where people can go check out this Yeah, this absolutely. Feature. I mean, you can go to Ducks.org and, and immediately pull up Ultimate, Ultimate Duck, Duck Boat. Boat. Yeah, it's the it same out, feature online. Everything's the With same. all these pictures. Except, yeah, all the images are there, except, you know, it's not in a magazine format. So it's a little, I feel like the magazine was a lot better than the digital version of it, but everything's in here. So yeah, I mean, Nelson at Southern Light LED put the entire package together for the lighting. So you've got your bow light, rooster tails, exterior lights, hatch lights, um, the you know ultimate anchor stern light. This is LED 2.0. This is one of my favorite things on this thing. And and if anyone who's duck hunted in a boat ever, unless you're like in the marsh of Louisiana where there's not many trees, um, you've knocked off your stern light before. I've broken probably 20 different stern lights. Well, this one 
he called me and he's like, dude, this thing's awesome. He's like super flexible. Uh, it just, it's got a quick connect plug in and then it's, I mean, you could hit a tree and it'll lay completely flat and then just swing right back up. And so like guys who are running timber, guys who are hunting the rivers a lot, like I'm coming into tight spaces, try, even just trying to pull the boat up against the bank on a lake or something where you're trying to cover the boat. You know, I've knocked my anchor light off doing that many times or stern light. So that was a really cool addition that they threw in there. Um, but then what really brought it up kind of to the next level was they threw in and, and it, it was funny because its name actually is the ultimate switch panel. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. oh, perfect. The ultimate boat for the ultimate switch panel. Um, and that switch system, um, they installed that and it and basically, you know, it's all LED lit up. Individually controlled lights. Everything is individually controlled. So you can go rooster tails to exterior lights, interior lights, each one of the hatch lights. And then you can also control your navigation. So the Raymarine Axiom and the Teledyne's all in that switch panel. So it was fantastic. You know, everything that they did there. So you got the, now you've got the, you've got the, the motor, the lighting, the flooring, which for me, the lighting and the flooring really made it, especially from a visual perspective. Um, and then, and then we need to accessorize it, right? That's right. Before we do that, we got we have a few more things to cover, but let's take a break and then we'll come back and we will finish this thing out and tell you what's next for this thing. All right, welcome back, folks. We're here with Chris Jennings in the studio, and we're talking about Ducks Unlimited's ultimate duck boat. I think where we left off, Chris, we had uh, pretty much gotten all the main components together, the boat, the motor, the flooring, all the lighting system, a real fancy FLIR forward-looking infrared deal. But then there's a whole lot of other accessories that we need to add to this, uh, right? So anything else on the kind of front end of that, big stuff we needed to cover before we move into the accessories? No, I mean, I think we've pretty much got all that covered, all the all the things that you can visually see kind of immediately jump out to you. And there's We've got that covered. And there's a ton of accessories. Tell us through some of those. Oh yeah. I mean the accessory part for us for me is was really the easy part because it's like the first thing as far as an accessory on a duck boat, what would you have? A blind. Yes. You know, so reach out to our friends at Drake Waterfowl. They didn't hesitate. Um, a cool story about this and a shout out uh, to Jamie Spence, who works for Drake Waterfowl, and there's product manager. He's the product manager for the Gilly Boat Blonde. Uh, he's in Dyersburg, Tennessee, and I had an issue. So we, I'm out in the garage. I'm like, all right, I got to put this yeah, blind on. I remember on. you telling me about this. Yeah, and so I get it out of the box, and I'm like, this is not going to fit. Like, the, you know, the way that the ultimate switch panel, that <laughs> Axiom, you know, the chart plotter is so big. Then it's mounted. Now we've got it all mounted. It's in there. Well, it the boat blind had to go right through there. Mm. So I'm like, oh man, we're gonna. So I immediately called Jim Ronquist. And I'm like, hey man, you got to help me out with you know, put me in touch with someone at Drake who can help me fix this solution. So I call this Jamie. Um, he's up in Dyersburg, which is about an hour and a half, hour and forty minutes north of Memphis. That day, he literally says, "Can you get it up to me?" Yep. So we loaded the blind in the boat, hitched it back up, and I drove up to Dyersburg. Met him in the Walmart parking lot, mm. you know, unhitched the boat again, you know. <laughs> and in this boat over. In this boat. So, unhitched it from my truck, drop it on his truck, he drives away. Calls me back that night and he's like, it's done. I can get it to you tomorrow. So, yeah, and then our photo editor, John Hoffman, went down and, and picked it, went up and picked it up from him the next day. But what he had to do is he had to actually bend that blind around. So, he bent the metal frame to go around all of and he also built bent it to go around the box, the gun box, because the gun box opens from the top. Oh, yeah. And it never even dawned on I was going to mount that thing. And so, and he's like, no, he's like, he bent that back so that you can open the box um, without the frame or the blind getting in the way. So, so fully customized. It, it actually is. It's a fully customized blind, uh, which is really awesome. We added, you know, we needed some boat seats. Weren't real sure what we were looking for there. I reached out to our friends at Millennium Marine. They hooked us up with a couple mossy oak. Um, seats, and they're in bottom land too, which is cool. Um, Avery Outdoors provided easy and boat ladder. That's just I an like easy. That, yeah. I like that too. I've jumped in and out of boats and fallen in, and you know, especially with waders, you're getting in and out. You avoid anything mm -hmm. of like catching your waders on the edge of a boat, um, any sharp yeah. edges, anything like that. You 
go right up. Can't it looks like it's that easy end boat ladder is probably collapsible. And kinda. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it comes apart, stows easily. Um, can't forget about the dogs. No. Nope. Avery also hooked us up with the Avery dog ramp, uh, which is a, you know, that that's a must-have, you know, unless – you're picking up a teeny tiny poodle and throwing them in the boat, which, you know, some dogs are smaller these days, but I know my dog, she's big. Yeah. She needs, she needs, needs to, to get climb her, in on her she own. She needs to get herself in the boat. <laughs> uh, and then we went, I reached out to our friends at Camp Chef and was like, hey, man, here's the project. I need something compact, something that guys in duck boats are not going to, it's not going to be in the way. They hooked us up with the Versatop griddle. Uh, awesome little thing you can see in the magazine and in the pictures. Like we actually fired it up and cooked bacon and eggs and toast on the griddle. For Was the I photo. invited to that? I don't remember that. <laughs> no, I, we'll get into that here in just a minute. <laughs> you might be lucky you weren't invited to that. <laughs> and so at this point, we're just loading it up with accessories. Um, you know, one of the one things that we wanted to throw in there was, you know, safety. So uh, reached out to Onyx. You know, they provided like foam cushion, a throwable. Uh, and a couple different variations of their life jacket, the uh, M24 manual inflatable, which is a pretty cool one. That's the one that has the CO2 cartridge. Um, really doesn't restrict movement or anything, so a lot of guys really like those. And then we have a couple of the classic, just the mesh life jackets, that you, things you have to have in the boat. Um, Yeti. Yep. Nothing, nothing is complete without a series of Yeti yeah items in there yeah they hooked us up with their new the m20 backpack cooler uh just have a cooler in the bag you can use it as a cooler or even use it as a dry box either one or a dry bag um 10 ounce rambler the tumblers got to have coffee cups for those cup holders you got cup holders you got to have cups absolutely um rambler one jug you know big coffee jug loadout go box the cool thing about the loadout go box is you know, that can be your dry box or your toolbox or whatever. But it's um, not insulated. I've actually not put my hands on one of those go boxes yet. It's not really insulated. No, no, it's, it's not insulated. But it's, it's a hard storage, plastic. That's right. That it's a storage sturdy. facility, okay. storage box. But one thing that's cool is we were down at Circle S Machine. I brought that down there, and he did a custom with the Ducks Unlimited oh, yeah. masthead. Again, he did a custom laser etched in that marsh deck to fit exactly on the top of that loadout box. So you can see it has Ducks Unlimited magazine on That's a one-of-a-kind. I mean, those sure. are one-of-a-kind deals. Yeah. I mean, not, they do, do not exist anywhere else. Decoys, Higdon, Magnum Flockhead, Mallard, Brooke up there at uh, Higdon was like, here, you know, he sent down rigs and decoys and bags. Uh, you know, there's only a dozen in there, but, you know, that's one of those things where it's like, if you get this boat, you can fill it up with uh, sure whatever but yeah. and then our friends at federal, and most of the people are probably going to have a few decoys already oh yeah yeah, yeah absolutely or and if then, not they can go buy some more yeah and federal uh federal su- supplied us with some tss so yeah. there's some there's an entire case of i got pretty gigs. i got pretty excited reading reading just that part of yeah. like holy cow that's uh that's a good deal. Yeah, they're a great partner as far as our, you know, premium TSS loads. So, you know, they just sent that down. So we added that into the, into, we basically just put it in the loadout box. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all the way through uh, the project. The, and the only really thing left to mention is the actual cover shop. Yeah. So basically, once we got the boat done, we got everything ready, lights working, everything. Um John Hoffman, who's our photo editor, and Shannon Purcell, who's our creative director for the magazine, you know, they put together a plan. The idea was to get this thing out during duck season on an actual hunt and get it out. Timing, flooring, lighting. Didn't work. If those boats have been traveling around a lot. Yeah. We didn't get it done in time. And uh, and so this was, I think, March maybe. By this time, this is March time frame, late February, mid-March even. We took this to a boat ramp here in West Tennessee and there's a small river, the Ghost River, and it looks pretty ducky on the cover. You know, sure you does. really can't. It's green. Which is and it a, was kind of late in the afternoon. Absolutely. Right we took it out there at like 6 o'clock at night, yeah. and we set the whole thing up. You know, Shannon and John did the whole thing, along with our one of our videographers, Zach Eshelman, who um, shot the actually, actually shot the cover shot with his drone. And so we got the boat going. Um, our ad director's husband, Hamp Brian is actually in the boat with his dog. Oh, I was wondering who that <laughs> yeah, was. Yeah, that is okay. Hamp Brian. And so as you go through the feature, you'll see. So that's Rosie. Rosie yeah, that's is right. Yeah. yeah. And so you'll actually see, um, you know, as in the feature, there's different angles and different shots of him running. So he would run up like 150, 200 yards, turn around, and then come back. And the whole time that they're doing this, I'm like grinding my teeth <laughs> because this river, I mean, it is tight. And I'm like, oh man, he's just going to smack a tree stump or something. We're going to rip, you know, 
rip this motor up or, you know, bust off one of the lights, you know, something like that. And that Teledyne, you mm-hmm. know, the fleer yeah. off the top, he's going to bump into a cypress tree and knock it off. But we did this for probably two hours until it got pitch black. And so and t- as soon as we got to the point where they could not even take photos anymore, you know, it was done. So that it was like 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night no before we're, I'm hauling this boat back to DU. There were people showing up there at the ramp, some of the locals who were fishing and stuff, mm-hmm. and they're like, "What? What are you guys doing?" But it was a really cool project with that, and they and they did an awesome job. You know, hats off to them. I mean, it was a fun project, and and they the creative team here, you know, really blew it out of the water to yeah. take it to the next level. Yeah, kudos to the entire team for all the work that you did on that. A question about this FLIR, the thermal camera, is that removable? It is, yeah. I mean, it's I mean, it's removable, but it's not like something you can unscrew and like pop off. Like two snaps and bam, no. you're off. But you can't. No, take it. and we talked about and we talked about building a metal frame around mm-hmm. it, um, but that thing's 360, so like it, it, you would limit the visual capacity of yeah. that thing. So it's it's kind of one of those deals where you know you can you can probably get a cover for it. That's what I would do if mm-hmm. I was hunting out of it. I would use it, and then just like the motor. You just take a piece of burlap or a small piece of camo, and you, that's one thing that you just cover up during the hunt. Yeah. So you went through a lot of, of ideas, and, and I think you mentioned I mean, the, the article shows a lot of the accessories, a lot of the features, but then you also kind of alluded earlier on to the idea that there's there's maybe a few other things like a camouflage boat cover. Is there anything else that comes along with this that y'all that y'all worked into this that didn't make it into the the magazine? Yeah, I mean, or? I think just some standard things that that ended up in the boat as far as um, gas tanks and yeah. gas line, things like that, and extra plugs, you know, different parts and pieces that you know if you you know if you've hunted out of a boat for any period of time, you know, you've got a little box full of just stuff, everything from cotter pins to, mm-hmm. you know, spark plugs and things like that. So, yeah, there's some additional accessories in there, um, along with there's even, uh, I think there's another dog ramp in there. There's okay. like, there's an ad- extra dog ramp. Well, the next big question is, where is the boat now and what's the plan for it? What can you tell me? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, that's uh, a... <laughs> Little bit of a little bit of a secret there. I mean, the boat is still at national headquarters in Memphis, but the unique aspect to this is it is kind of a secret. There are some things in the work. If you're listening to this and you're like, "Hey, you know, it would be great to have a chance to win this boat," um, and I think what our listeners need to do is reach out to your regional director, ask them about it. Um, like I said, it is kind of a secret deal and, and there will be opportunities. Can't, can't share a whole lot of the details can't right now. Can't share the details, but there will be some opportunities for, you know, someone to walk away with this boat. Yeah. Drive away in the water. Yeah. Well, presumably. yeah, don't walk away. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, away. so check with your regional director, uh, go to a DU banquet. A lot of times the RDs are there. Ask the RDs what, what kind of information they can share about the, uh, about what's happening with this boat. And, and yeah, that, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool to think about the, the fact that sometime in the future, somebody else is going to have the ultimate duck boat there. Yep. That's awesome. And I, I, one of a kind in so many respects. Yeah, and just just one more time, I just want to thank you know everyone who you know helped out with this project. Um, obviously, War Eagle, Yamaha, you know Circle S Machine, Southern Light LED, Drake with the blind, Higdon, Yeti, um, you know everyone that contributed to this thing. Avery, um, Avery Outdoors. It was just it was a fantastic project for me, and um, and as the calendar continues to move, we've already got the next ultimate uh, I see you I was gonna ask planning. you yeah I'm not gonna say what it is quite yet but it's definitely a tool that all duck hunters you know will be interested in taking a look at uh, once again it'll be oh you know that's not this and that's <laughs> not that but uh, <laughs> yeah you know from from our perspective it's it's really about you know the the tool itself and then the accessories to go with it so that'll and that'll be for july august 2023 next year Our okay be seeing that, well so. i look forward to i look forward to hearing about that i look forward to seeing it and i might catch a glimpse or two of whatever that is around here i don't i'm not sure if i even know what that is right and there's now. one in the garage is it? i'll say that <laughs> all right so anything else chris i think we're good wow this has been this has been cool to kind of hear about the behind the scenes of 
of what went into this, see how it all came together. I know it took a lot of time. I know it, it gave you a few headaches putting everything together. I remember going back there in the garage one time and that I saw the boat and it was just stacked full of boxes, <laughs> yeah. right? Because you get all this stuff in and you have to move it out or have to have to get it situated. And so you got it done. Looks fantastic. Thanks for thanks for the great idea to come on and talk about this today. It's been great, Chris. Appreciate it, man. Cool. It was fun. Fun project and fun podcast. A very special thanks to my guest on today's episode, my co-host, Chris Jennings. Appreciate all the work that he does here at Ducks Unlimited, including developing, putting together the ultimate duck boat. Hope you all enjoy it. Take a look at that, that article in the magazine or online. As always, we thank our producer, Chris Isaac, for the wonderful job he does with these episodes and getting them out to you. And we thank you, the listener, for joining us and for your support of wetlands and waterfowl conservation. Thank you for listening to this episode of the DU Podcast. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the show. And visit www.ducks.org slash DU Podcast for resources based on today's topics, as well as access to more episodes. Opinions expressed by guests do not necessarily reflect those of Ducks Unlimited. Until next time, stay tuned to the Ducks. Stay tuned to the Ducks. Stay tuned to the ducks.